In this video, I'm going to explain how to add and edit products. You will notice that some options are slightly different for you if your webshop is linked to an EPO system. You can just ignore those fields because all other things are still applicable. And if you've used our CMS frequently, you may want to skip this video because you want to import product information. However, I still recommend you to watch this video because the better you understand how adding products via the CMS works, the easier it is to do a good import later. Just go to webshop and select products on the left. On the menu that appears, click products again. On this page an overview of all products is being shown. Let me explain a few things about this page. First of all, on the right you can use the search option to search on name, year N or article number. If you click on the plus icon, you get more options, so you can select the items you're looking for. Select all activated items, or just narrow it down to items from a specific brand. Once you're ready, click on search. If you want to see all items, click on clear. You can also sort items on price, stock, the number of items sold, if they're active, and the creation date. Just click on the title, and the page will refresh and show all items sorted on stock in this case. Let's create a new product. Click on add. I'm going to explain all the fields on this page to you. However, a few things might be different for your webshop if you're linked to an EPO system. The first option we're going to add is the name. The name can be anything, however, I recommend you to have a consistent name. So typically, most of our customers start with the brand name and then the name of the product. If you're going to sell a barbecue, it could be a Weber Q200. The EA encode is one of the most important fields on the CMS. Why? Everything we do is linked to an EA encode. If we make an integration with your POS system, the EA encode is the way we integrate data. If you're interfacing with Amazon or other marketplaces, the EA encode is mandatory as well. So it's, it's not very common to use EA encodes in the UK, Ireland or anywhere else. However, I really recommend you to use the barcode, the EN13 code you get from your suppliers. So not just the article number, the full 13 numbered code. The next option is the VAT scale. This one is pretty straightforward, so you can just select the scale you want to use. The next two fields are related to prices. Normally, you only need to add a regular price. Let's say 250. As you can see, the system automatically calculates the price X VAT or X taxes. However, if you're adding an offer, you also need to add the old price of the product. The old price is logically always higher than the new price. So let's say we make this one 300. If you do that, the Garden Connect CMS will automatically recognize it's an offer and display an action appearance. Also, the old price and the new price are both shown on the product page. If you're not interfacing with the POS system, you need to add your stock if you want to use stock. So let's say you got 10 in stock. The variation options are covered on the next academy course. So we're going to skip that one for now. The next option is to select a brand. I explained everything about brands in the previous video. Let's select a brand. Now we need to link this item to one or more categories. As a rule of thumb, I recommend you to add items only to one category. And that should be the lowest category. So for example, if you're adding a plant, you only need to add it to the lowest category, for example, the garden patio roses. If your website visitors are on the page with plants or roses, they can see this item as well, even though it's not linked. So always use the lowest category level. But why do I recommend this to you? If you're using shipping conditions on a category level, and you're adding items to multiple categories, it can be confusing for you or the customer on your website how the shipping costs are calculated. If you're not using shipping conditions on a category level, you're good to go and select many categories. 
If you do use them on a category level, make sure you only select one category to avoid confusion on your end or on your customer's end. Then we've got three fields with descriptions. The short description, the description, and the extra description. Let me explain that. The short description is sometimes displayed on top of the price on the right hand side of a product page. However, we don't show that description all the time. So only if we tell you to use it, you should use it. The description is the most important one. The description is shown on the description tab and should be at least 500 words. I explained everything about the website editor you can see over here during the course about the Garden Connect websites. So if you're not sure how the editor works, I recommend you to have a look at that video. Underneath the description box, you can see a few hints, search engine optimization tips. It's important to use three H2s, 500 words, add three links to other pages on your website, a list with bullets or summary, and a few bold words. Try to achieve this and to make sure everything's sorted. So three subtitles, 500 words, three links, a summary, and a bold text. Doing so helps you to get better Google rankings. The extra description is sometimes displayed on the bottom of your website. Most of the times, however, you can skip this one. You can also add a meta description on the product page. The meta description is shown on the search results of Google. So make sure you add something inspiring so people are enthusiastic and click on the link. If you don't add anything, the Garden Connect CMS will try to generate the meta description which is relevant and unique for your page. The last options, the last thing to do on this page is to upload pictures. You can add as many pictures as you want. And I can recommend you to add three, four, five pictures per product. Why? People are at home, so they don't have a clue what they're going to buy. Having multiple photos from multiple angles and hotspots of the item help them to make a purchase decision. So be sure to click on choose file and to upload an image to the CMS. As a rule of thumb, I recommend you to keep the file size around 1 MB at most. And if you want to be the perfect online marketeer, you can add the title tag. The title tag will be linked to the image and that will help you to rank on Google Images. The variations are covered on the next video, so we're going to skip that one. But is this everything you need to do? Not exactly. Let's go up again. We just covered everything on the general tab. Let's go to advanced options. The overview name is often used with variations, which will be covered on the next video. So let's move on to the second one. Possible to order, yes or no. If you uncheck this box, the product will be displayed without an order button. Even if you have enough stock, consumers will not be able to place an order. The third option is always orderable. When this option is active, a product will always be orderable, even if the stock is too low and other settings say that it would be inactive or not orderable. And this one is very useful for gift cards and compost, because that's something you always have in stock. The next option is to exclude this item from the minimum order amount. How does it work? Let's assume we have a minimum order amount of 25 euros on your webshop. But what happens if customers want to buy a gift voucher for 15 euros? In that case, you don't want the minimum order amount to apply to that specific order. So if you're adding a gift voucher, make sure to exclude it from the minimum order amount. If you're not using a minimum order amount, you can skip this option at all. Exclude from feeds. If you're using XML feeds to interface with Google Shopping, Facebook Catalog, Instagram Shopping, or other third parties, you're using product feeds. If you don't want this item to appear on feeds, check this box. If you're adding plants, you can add a Latin name. 
or if you added the letter name as the regular product name, you can add the common name on this field. The packaging unit is also important to understand. The packaging unit can be per liter, per square meter, and so on. If you want to apply a discount percentage, you can add it on the field discount percentage. For some items, it makes sense to offer a pickup discount. In that case, you can add it on the pickup discount percentage field. Most of the times, you're going to ship items and you're going to offer click and collect. So delivery and pickup should both be active, which is displayed on this drop-down menu. However, sometimes you want items to be pickup only. For example, plants, aggregates or compost. In that case, you need to change it to pickup only. Sometimes you're doing drop shipment with your supplier. In that case, it should be the other way around and delivery only because you won't have the items in store. Sometimes you don't want to charge shipping costs for specific items. Gift vouchers are a great example of that. In that case, check no shipping costs. The other way around, you can also charge additional shipping costs, which can be handy with compost, aggregates and so on. If you do so, we need to know the VAT scale for additional shipping costs, which is usually a standard rate. And make sure to add the figure like 10 euros. If you want, you can set a minimum order amount. If you leave it empty, the minimal order amount will be one for each item. However, if you sell them per tree, you need to enter three. For some items, you want to give a maximum order. So for this item, you can only order five at once. Or let's say five. Customers trying to order six or more will get an error message. The minimal stock amount is important to understand. As I explained before, a lot of these things are set up on a webshop level, category level, subcategory level, and eventually on a product level. So I recommend you to leave it empty. However, if you want to have a minimal stock amount level on a product level, you can set it up over here. So let's assume the minimal stock amount for the entire webshop is five. That means that if stock falls below five, products will be blocked, hidden, or they will be shown without an order button. But let's assume you get plenty of items in stock for this one, or you can replenish your stock very quickly. So for this item, the minimal stock amount should be one. Let's add one. If you do so, stock for all your items can be below five and the order button will be removed or the product will be hidden, depending on your settings. But for this item, it's overwritten by setting on a product level and the setting in this case is one. You can add a years of warranty. Let's assume you got two years warranty on this product. And then you can set up the number of days before delivery. I already explained how this works on the category video. And this is the setting on the product level and it does the same job. If you want, you can also offer separate delivery. How does it work? Usually, consumers get the option to ship the entire order to one address. But if you're selling gifts, gift cards, or bouquets of flowers, you want customers to be able to add a different shipping address for each item within their cart. If you want to do that, make sure to check the separate delivery box for this item. The linked information will be covered on one of the future courses, so I'm going to skip that one for now. Then we're back at the shipping conditions again. As explained, shipping conditions are usually set up on webshop level, category level, subcategory level, and eventually on the product level. So I don't recommend you to use them on the product level. However, if you want to do that, just click on the items and they will be added to the left hand side. However, be aware, if you do it on the product level, it will override or overrule the settings on the subcategory and webshop level. You can also link accessories to products. I'm going to cover accessories later on. The next option is to link products. How does it work? 
normally on a product page. If you scroll down, you see something like you might be interested in. Those are the linked products. So if you don't select anything, we will take items from the same category. However, you can overrule that by looking for items and select them manually in this box. So let's search for plants. If we do so, all suggestions will be displayed including the word plants. And the only thing you need to do to link items is to scroll down, search for the right plant and click on it. Usually we display three to four items as a recommendation on a product page. But well, what happens if you only select one linked product on this box? In that case, this one will be displayed and the other three will be added by the Garland Connect CMS. So you'll never have empty boxes. Most of our customers just leave this empty and let us populate this information. The next option are the action appearances. However, we got a course specifically about action appearances, so let's skip that one for now. There are two more options you can see over here, properties and multibuys. Multibuys are covered in a separate course, so let's zoom in on the properties as the last step of the process. Just click and over here you can select one of the properties you want to link. Just click on the drop down menu and select a property, for example, weight in kilos. As you can see, all values linked to weight in kilos are displayed over here. But what should you do if the weight of this item is 7 kilos and not 5? If you look at the right, you can add a new value. So let's add 7 and click on save. As you can see, 7 is added. You can use 7 from now on on any item you're adding to your webshop and it will automatically and it will automatically be linked to this product. If you want to add a second property, just click on new property. Find it and select the color in this case. As a rule of thumb, I recommend you to add at least five properties to each product you're uploading to your webshop. Once you're done, just click on save to go back to the overview. There's one last thing you need to know before we go on to the next course. Let's scroll down a little bit. You can see the yellow markers in the middle of the page. The yellow marker means there's a reason why a product isn't shown on your webshop. If you hover your mouse over the yellow marker, it will tell you why an item isn't displayed. In this case, the product won't be shown because the linked categories are not active. So the solution is to go to the category page, activate the category, and then the item will become active and the yellow marker will be removed. Bear in mind, there can be multiple reasons why items aren't displayed. So be sure to go back to this page to make sure there are no yellow markers anymore. It may seem like a lot of work to put products online, but your investment will pay for itself. After all, good product information leads to more orders. In the next video, I'm going to explain to you how product series and variations work.